Hello, and welcome to Some Integrals Preliminary Calculus Information. This is a continuation of the last one where we were talking about absolute value uh, properties, and this is a particularly important one called the triangle inequality. Um, I'll explain where the name triangle inequality comes from after I've introduced it. So let's just outright state what the triangle inequality is. Triangle inequality. Right. So for any real numbers a and b, the absolute value of a plus b, so the absolute value of this sum, is going to be less than or equal to the sum of their absolute values individually. So I'll just say that again. The absolute value of a plus b is going to be less than or equal to the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B. Um, and what that, what that means is geometrically it relates sides of a triangle, but I'll, I'll get to that in a little bit. First I'm going to do an example just to kind of make you feel comfortable that it should be a less than or equal to. So let's take particular numbers for A and B. Let's say uh, the absolute value of 2 plus 3. All right, that's going to be equal to the absolute value of 5, which is equal to just 5. So that's the left side of this uh, inequality. Let's see what happens on the right side, though. So if I take the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B, that's going to be the absolute value of 2 plus the absolute value of 3, which is going to be equal to just 2 plus 3, um, which is 5. So again, we get both sides are equal. All right? We get 5 and they're equal. So it's definitely an equality of some kind. But is there a case where they're not equal? Let's take the absolute value of 4 plus negative 1. So we'll take a negative number inside of there. And what we find is 4 plus negative 1 is the same as 4 minus 1. So that's going to give me uh, 3. So the absolute value of 4 plus negative 1 is equal to the absolute value of 3, which is equal to just 3. So that gives me the left side of the inequality. And let's see what happens on the right. So I'll have the absolute value of 4 plus the absolute value of negative 1. All right, well, the absolute value of 4 is just 4 plus the absolute value of negative 1 is positive 1. So I now get 4 plus 1, which is equal to 5. And so I see 5 is bigger than 3, so we need equality or less than, which is why the triangle inequality is presented this way. The absolute value of A plus B is less than or equal to the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B. Um, this is only one of the forms of the triangle inequality. There's actually two forms. Um, this is what's called the addition form. The other one is subtraction. So instead of a plus b, we have a minus b. And that turns out to be greater than or equal to the absolute value of a minus the absolute value of b. So when we split it up over a difference, we actually get it's greater than or equal to the difference of their individual absolute values. So let's, let's again try some examples to see what, what's going on when we plug in particular numbers. So if I say the absolute value of uh, 3 minus 2, that should be a good one. 3 minus 2 is equal to 1, so the left side is going to be the absolute value of 3 minus 2 equals the absolute value of 1, which is just 1. On the right side, what we see is the absolute value of 3 minus the absolute value of 2. Uh, the absolute value of 3 is just, oops, the absolute value of 3 is just 3 minus the absolute value of 2 is just 2. So what we get is 3 minus 2, which is 1, and they're equal again. However, as before, I can come up with an example where it isn't equal. If I say the absolute value of 5 minus negative 3, what I get is 5 minus negative 3 on the left. That's the same thing as 5 plus 3. So that's going to be equal to the absolute value of 8, which is equal to just 8 since it's positive. 
And on the right side, what I find is the absolute value of 5 minus the absolute value of negative 3. Uh, the absolute value of 5 is just 5. And the absolute value of negative 3 is positive 3. So it's going to be 5 minus 3 because there's a minus sign between them. So we get 5 minus 3, which is equal to 2. And so we see what we wanted. We saw it's either going to be greater than or equal to. So the subtraction form of the triangle inequality needs to go in the other direction. The absolute value of a minus b is greater than or equal to the absolute value of a minus the absolute value of b. And I'm just going to box these off and highlight them because they're incredibly important. So this is the addition form, which you, you're probably more familiar with the addition form since it has a nice geometric intuition. Um, and the subtraction form is also very important, but it's a little less common to see that. So um, don't feel bad if you haven't seen it or if it doesn't feel as comfortable as the addition one. All right, so let's, let's look at the uh, geometric intuition behind the triangle inequality. Uh, and I'm feeling like just I should do some colors because it's been just white and it's kind of boring. So let's let this little arrow here represent A. And so the length of that arrow is going to be the absolute value of A. So we're, that's how we're defining the absolute value for right now. And let's make another one. Let's make it a little longer and call this the absolute value of B, where the, the absolute value of B describes the length of this arrow where I've kind of just laid it the tail of the arrow right at the point of the first one. If you've ever studied um, vector addition basically it forces this arrow right here which is going to be the absolute value of a plus b. It's the length of the arrow you get when you add a and b. Or you could think of it as the the third side of a triangle formed when you have two lines connecting, uh, being connected at the other endpoints. So what we see is the absolute value of a plus b uh, has to be less than or equal to the absolute value of a <coughs> plus the absolute value of b, right? The length of these two sides of a triangle have to be longer than the length of the third side. I don't know if uh, you have any triangles memorized, but a very common right triangle is one that looks like this. It's a three, four, five right triangle. <clears throat> so I can take any two of these sides and add up their lengths. So the, you know, I can add three and four to get seven. Seven is bigger than five. I can add 5 and 4 to get 9. 9 is bigger than 3. I can add 3 and 5 to get 8. 8 is bigger than 4. And the only way that we're going to get them to be equal is if it's not really a triangle, if it's just a flat line where we have, say, here, 3 and 2. That's the only way that it'll actually be equal is when we have 3 and 2 and then we add them up to get 5. That's the only place where this triangle inequality, um, the, I'm sorry, the triangle inequality becomes an equality, is when we've sort of squished, um, we've taken a triangle and we've brought down that corner so that it's just a flat line right there. So those are the, um, this is the geometric intuition behind the triangle inequality and you can play around with it. You can plug in values to make sure it, it always checks out. It's a, it's a rule that inequalities and absolute values have to follow. But it, it'll be very important later on when we start evaluating more complicated functions, which I'll define later, and when we start trying to compare functions. Um, and the absolute value is already very important for defining the area since it's, it's a positive value that we're going to be looking at. So definitely learn the uh, triangle inequality. Um, you know, work, work with the, the subtraction form of the triangle inequality. If, 
if it doesn't feel as comfortable for you, if you know the vector addition, um, practice sort of picturing why vector addition gives you the triangle inequality in a very easy, convenient way. So that'll be all for this video. Uh, I hope it help. I hope it helped you understand the triangle inequality. If you have any questions, leave a comment. Um, I know this is starting to get to the more difficult stuff in the pre-calculus curriculum, but I'm going to keep going through it at a pretty steady pace, and eventually I'm going to start hitting regular calculus material. So um, I hope you enjoy the video, and uh, I'll see you later videos.